Happy New Year, drumheads. Happy New Year, Andy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, well, I say New Year, but really we're, we're doing this what, at the end, end of the month, so we're well into everybody's, the sick, everybody's sick of the drink and yeah, we're done. turkey. And, look, I've even got the stars down. Look, I've got the, yeah, the, the background's the, a bit... That New Year, New Year, you're probably back to the old you by now. Do you know what? I, honestly, I think by the, the, the 3rd of January or something like that, 3rd or 4th of January... Uh, I've got this thing in the back the back garden I put it up it's called Christmas Corner where I do like a kind of Christmas tree outside and all that oh, yeah. down it's gone Ripped down oh wow gone maybe like 12 days before 12 days gone 4 days later out turn it into smoke <laughs> how was your new year what What did you do for new year in Sydney hey Jeez. let me tell you what I, I upset my neighbours I um we, we can't everybody just came had a party at my house basically the idea was to go down the park. Council closed the park, said it was a ticketed event. And we were like, what's, what's going on here? This is some corrupt shit. So ended up just having a party in my house till about 5.30 in the morning. And uh, yeah, the neighbours approached me the next day and said, mate, that was that was too much. And I'm saying, you're telling me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, right. So right away, you've already put the, uh, the I'm no going to bother going to Australia statement out there, right? Half past five in the morning on let me get this right, Hogmanay. Yeah. The one the one day of the year where everybody's meant to go mad for it. You're telling me that the civic Australians are like, I know, mate. That much. No, what the, I mean, that's it. That's what I was. Come on. I mean, this is the expectation. No, listen, you know right? listen, listen. I I, I would get it. Um but one day of the year, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to kind of advocate on really neighbors or anything like that. Hogmanay, happy new year! Guns going off and fireworks and everything. Hey, so this is something I actually would like to talk to you about and actually get a bit of feedback from the drumheads. Is cool. We're all, I mean, you're a drumhead whether you're a drummer or not, right? It's- Still on it, by the way. There, there ain't no drink resolution. It's you know, New Year's stuff. No, <laughs> Same old us. Um, as drummers, we're known for pissing off the neighbours worldwide. But listen, I want to. I want to hear from. I want to hear from drumheads, right? Like if you've if you've had some beef with your neighbours through music or whatever, how have you managed that, right? M- more specifically, through music, have you been playing your music and and then. Received a complaint. Tell us about it. I'll I'll, I'll give you one right. So I'll, I've I'll, obviously I don't live like a rock star lifestyle with my own mansion and my my own recording studio, right? Maybe one day if we start getting people watching the show. But <laughs> but here's my point, right? So I live obviously like a semi-detached house, but obviously there's not a house attached to the house. I've been in the living room having a right good practice with like maybe something on that that you. Cast onto the TV. Mm. We sit and practice in a way and all that. And uh, it's been like genuinely like kind of in the afternoon. Yeah. And I've had I've had the bangs on the wall. No. Like listen, do you know but do you know something, right? Like this is the other thing that we've got to we've got to kind of appreciate is any any musician, it's not just drummers. Yeah. When you're practicing, right, you're not playing performing. Yeah, you're not performing. You, you you might be playing one bar, yeah, repetitively, you know, re- repeatedly, just that same bar over and over. Yeah. You know, oh, gotta ring it. Oh, gotta ring it. Oh, gotta. Ring it. You would drive, would drive another drummer if you'd be like, can you not just get that bit off yet? So you're doing your own. Can you imagine in. like Geddy <laughs> Lee from Rush, the bass guitarist? You'd be like, Geddy, do that once more, man. Go take the bass off you. Track it right out of your skull. Mate, that's rush. How do them. how do people like trumpet players get their reps in? Like, there's instruments that are worse than drums, I'm sure of it. Like, we we just play on a pad. You can play on a pad, well, and that's it's quite a thing it's that's what I was that's what I was going to say about the you know, playing on a pad. I'm thinking, so I normally go out to drum hall or the garage, which we which I'm filming for here, right? So I normally practice out here and it's 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 kind of friendly. But I'm just shocked at uh, you know, your neighbours were like, uh, you're a bit too loud to, uh, you know, finish at half five in the morning. But here's a question, Jason, right? Yeah. Did you invite them to the party? No way. Narcs like that? Nah. Had I? No, I mean, 
Come on, it's New Year. See, this is a Scottish thing, right? Mm. See, right, oh, this is maybe a difference, right? But in Scotland, obviously, the whole gig is that you're meant to first foot people, which is when you go and visit people in their house. I mean, obviously, it's died out a wee bit. They've kind of commercialised it and drove, dragged everybody to the centre of Edinburgh and, like you're saying, fenced it all off and charged uh-huh. people ticket money. Yeah. Oh, look who's doing it. Right, that's, that isn't really Hogmanay, right? Or what well, I class Hogmanay. What you did and what I did, because I had my son's girlfriend round, she was round for a, like, a Hogmanay party. And uh, basic long story cut short, uh, we were just going mad for it, playing board games, drinking, like, listening to tunes, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Uh, and and the, you know what I mean? Perfect. Perfect. But, but it's an open door. So if the neighbours want to come round, or people, literally, I, I've, I've seen myself one year outside having a cigar, somebody walked by, Happy New Year. I kind of knew their face. They stayed in the same village. I was like, you want to come in for a drink? Came in, a couple of bevies. Lovely. That's New Year. That's it. That's, that's why you do business, man. Well, I mean, that's that's the way I am anyway. So if anyone wants to come around and have a beer, they're welcome to. Well, me and my wife and my kids are coming down to yours for about six weeks just to live in your back garage. So how about that for first um, time? You look at, you look at ready. I, I think I'm busy that week. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me know close to the day. <laughs> right, let's get let's get on, let's go with it. So that's a, that's a new year, can I? I want to ask you wait, what's been going on with you? What did you what did you get up to over the years? Right, okay, so New Year, New Year's Eve of Hogmanay. Yeah, uh, I was actually doing a gig with the band that I play with. Now hmm. here it comes. I know the last few episodes I've been kind of a bit evasive about which band I play with. But I've already spoke to McGaffer and explained that I do the drum cast and uh, sent, him, sent him a copy of it. So bottom line is, uh, if he's happy that I, I do it and it doesn't interfere with the core, then I'll keep doing it. So it was with Colburn IOR, and i just been promoted to grade two. Um, they're relatively local to me, and uh, I was asked to do a, a wee gig with them at, at, at the Colburn Club. Okay, uh, and that's like uh, you know, that's like a kind of what was formerly known as a miners welfare club. So this is like a kind of community hub within the the, the, the kind of small village town, uh, and everybody from the 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 the, the, the environ the local area goes there to get a bar. They can use it for you know hall whatever. They want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, community spot. Yeah, like a community a community hall, but you know, embedded into the the, the fabric of the, the village. And uh, we went up there, played for 35 minutes, and it's like, it's like one of the most essential things I I personally believe is great about the pipe band. Mm. Um, Going up there and playing, it was well received by the people that are up there Mm. uh, in Coburn, Mm. uh, and they've got got a a silver band and a brass band. So they've got a brass band that represents Coburn, they've got a pipe band that represents Coburn. Brilliant. And uh, this this is like a town that was like, kind of always kind of, it was a, a kind of mining community, and like quite a few uh, villages and towns scattered around about Scotland, Central Belt, but in Lanarkshire. And uh, these people that, that that lived in these these towns, they never had a lot of money, uh, worked really hard. Uh, with, I mean, anybody that knows anything about mining, it's a really really hard profession. Uh, Brutal. Nails, you know, when you're working yeah. in fine spaces, I could never do it. Nah, fine spaces, hard hours, and basically putting putting money for the wage slip and paying and supporting the pipe band, brass mm. band, and that represents, you know, and, and representing them, who they are as people. And I just think that that's, I mean, no, no one to sound like kind of going off in a, a kind of tangent or soapbox, but it's kind of important that that thread between the band and the community is kind of anchored in. And Big um, time. You know what I mean? And I, I would imagine it's the same in, in, in a lot of villages, a lot of towns. But what I've noticed, and here it comes. So with, with me, there's always a there's always a there's a good <laughs> and there's a bad side, right? So here's here's what I've noticed as time's moved on, right? So you've got the mighty shots in Dykehead, right? Mm-hmm. Bob and Bathgate. Um, you've got uh, Colburn IOR, 
You've got all these these types of bands that have been hewed out of community, hewed out of, you know, re- representing hardworking people, people with all the money, uh, but, you know, doing sterling stuff, great, great work, and enforcing, you know, that that's who they are, the brand. And then there's, here's the flip side, right? And this, you can, I can imagine the comments flying in right now, right? I'm going, I'm going to say this, right? Go on. So let's talk about the difference between the, the, the you, you know, your coal burns, your kind of mining welfare type community pipe bands where it is the community and it's people in all our money just kind of trying to get them and learn the, learn the pipes, learn the drums. And it's taking them in a, in a different direction. It's giving them a different viewpoint. Versus, here it is, big posh schools. Oh. Big posh schools. Yes. Like, uh, yes. Not, well, I, I could name them, right? Like Dollar Academy or, you know, like we're talking like mega fees. With it. And this is no, but, re- you know, it's not, it's not like, I'm not trying to have a go at the people that are, are doing that work. But the difference is, is that in essence, this is like a high fee paying school mm-hmm. that pays for top line instructor. Yeah. Right. So it pays for like a big name, big instructor, whether it be bagpipes, whether it be We're going to. Yeah. And it's a good and it's a good gig for them. I'm not yep. trying to say well, it's great gig. It's, it's good for them. If you can right? get one, get it. <laughs> and I'm actually to put them, but it's not about that. It's about the kind of concept of, you know. I'd love to be really wealthy, and it's not about trying to have a go at people that are wealthy. It's just the fact that these schools have got the the capability, the the money to create a really good environment and an easy environment to turn out really good pipers and drummers. Yeah. At the end of the day, yes. what is the problem? There's no problem with that. Mm. But I just think there's a slight sort of kind of differential of where we've went and how it's became kind of. And you know, kind of in fabric with expensive fee paying schools, then they leave the fee paying schools and then they end up going to your more kind of top end pipe band where mm-hmm. they're kind of farmed into that pipe band from people that have been teaching them at that school. Yeah. So, my question is, is, is that I don't know, I don't know what I think. I'm not, I'm not trying to have a go at MD that's teaching them, I'm not having a go at MD that's, that's doing it. Good. Get drumming. That's mm. all it's about. It's just about the kind of social, the social dynamic to that. Mm. What what does it mean? I mean, I, I could I could name guys that are going to pipe band drum calls. that have been taught by drum instructors, good good drum instructors, good good on them, getting great great pay for it, and they've got these potentially kind of potential kids. I mean, I don't know time. how it is in Scotland, right? But like. Go well. Your your population percentage, how many people would go and play in a pipe band, like and become a pipe band drummer? I mean, over here, it's it's next to nothing, especially in a small town. It's just old boys, you know what I mean? Old boys and girls just getting together, you know, reminiscing on the good old days, having a having a bit of a jam, right? But in the yep. cities, your most of your percentage of people are the ones who have just been forced to play it in school. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just use the phrase, did you just use the phrase, you people? Did you use that (laughs) phrase, you people? You filthy. Did you say that? You people, you drummer people? Or you Scottish people? I don't know. I don't know what I'm taking offence at. I don't know what you people get up to. (laughs) But... You know what I'm saying? I, I know, I get, where you're, I get where you're coming from. I'm just, it's good, I'm just, you know, but and it keeps the I'm standard just, high. It keeps the standard high. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm only just saying the thing about the, the community thing. Yes. Um, where, you know, it's, it's like kind of more organic mm. versus a kind of parachuted in instructor within the curricular time frame mm. where they, you know, they might have like PT or PE or whatever you call it or you know cricket or football or whatever and then at the same time they go oh we've got the pipe band and they've got leaking us top end guys going in and teaching them there's nothing wrong with that that's, that's I'm not trying to say that's going to stop or anything wrong with it I'm just asking a question though that it's somewhat changed it's mm. somewhat kind of changed where you know I mean I, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to kind of big up something I know for a fact the sterling work that the people at Colburn Pipe Band does where they, that is still the thing where it's you know we're not 
flying people in or bringing people into the band to bring the band up. We're bringing people from the local area. Yeah. And they're, they're the, the, you know, they're dedicated to teaching Pure enthusiasm. And, and bringing the band up that way. So yeah. from bottom to top, as opposed to top, and yeah. then if it doesn't go their way, everybody kind of scuppers off and yeah. leaves the ship. Yeah. It's just, it's just food for thought. So if he's wanting to send me nasty emails or text messages, he's not going to do it. Where is it, Jason? Where did he send it? Rude <laughs> and mental. <laughs> Dot drumcast at gmail.com. Hey, Back on me up. Something I was going to ask about just actually playing gigs on New Year's. Playing yep. a gig on New Year's for a pipe band is bloody, is is pretty much the gig, surely. I mean, obviously you got tattoos, but, but like with old Lang Zion and all that, it just seems really fitting that playing a gig on New Year's is the way to do it for a pipe band. Well, My pipe band doesn't do it. Good. I think because everybody's just pissed the whole time. But well, I was going to say it wasn't. It wasn't for the bells, as you would say. You know, the the kind of midnight chimes. It wasn't for that. It was between like um, quarter to eight ish. Get the party going about half about about quarter to eight and about half past eight. Yeah. So it wasn't for the actual bells. For the actual bells, the guys in the band all went round to their um, band hall. Had a wee party in there. Mm. So to be honest. Uh, aye, it was it was only for the forty five minutes, but it was still the thing that you know it will get a start. You exactly getting the, getting a party going and yeah, and, and getting getting a, getting a good vibe with it. So aye, that's what we've done. It's good, and and, and also and I enjoyed it. The 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 video you've sent, and and we'll get it up here of you playing. But um, the guy you're playing with, and yourself, right? You're playing bog forget standard. Me, shoot. Forget me. I'm I'm just I'm white noise. I know that. <laughs> I know that. I'm aware of that. I'm like, why, guys? Yeah, the yeah. guy I'm playing with, he's dynamite. He's yeah, absolutely I mean, dynamite. So, like, you're playing bog standard tunes, but you're playing them so crisp. And that standard that you're playing at is really, like, it's something I'll want my my core to be striving for. Is Well, listen, listen, it, these things aren't... I know it's a, it's a cheesy statement, but you know Rome wasn't built in a day. And the guy that put me Wally Kerr, that's a lead tip. I mean, this guy, this guy, he works for what he gets out of his core. He works, he works hard. He's like, so I, I see it, I see it all the time. I see it when mm. I come up and I'm get, like when I come up to practice. He's already been up there maybe a couple of hours before me, and he's yeah. taking people and teaching people stuff. So he's he's doing all that background work. It doesn't. Obviously, it doesn't yes. just happen like overnight. It's yeah. all the work that this guy puts in is is what is getting demonstrated at the end product. Yeah. So, and you know, I he's don't, the one you're no, teaching. Oh it. no, I'm going to say it. Sounds good. I'm going to say it. Oh. Do you know what I was going to say though? There's no shortcuts. Oh, that's copyrighted now, isn't it? Sorry, I don't, is it copyrighted? I don't <laughs> think so. If I, listen, if I wear a Christmas hat, maybe I get to see it. There's no shortcuts. <laughs> but you've been up to something else. In the local area, well, as listen, you always are. It, listen, we, unfortunately, it wasn't anywhere exotic like the city of Belfast. <laughs> um, so this time, um, for on the beat, uh, I, I took the easy option, which is I'm pretty local to the South Lanarkshire town of Cambus Nathan, mm. and um, Cambus Nathan, of course, is the birthplace of the famous pipe band drummer and big band drummer. Swing drummer, Mr. Alex Dothel. Now, if anybody's ever picked up a pair of sticks in the pipe band world, I guarantee you they know exactly who we're talking about. And further afield, there'll be people that know exactly who it is um, from, like, you know, I don't know, big band drummers that, that, that have actually got a clue about rudiments and pipe bands uh, and what they've, they've brought overall to the rudiment kind of movement. They'll kind of have an idea of who Alex Dothel is, but we'll talk about that a wee bit later on. Let's watch the film. Okay, so it's here at Camus Nathan Cemetery where the legend of the late Alex Duffer is laid to rest. He suffered a fatal heart attack whilst playing on Macy's Thanksgiving Parade the 27th of November 1986. He was obviously given full honours. The uh, drum corps played these famous drum salute uh, and... This is his final resting spot, so there's only really one thing left for me to do at this precise moment, is um, pay proper respects. Thanks.
Andy, absolutely massive effort there going. I mean, I know it was only local, but like you went there, you paid your respects to the listen, um, great Alex. Yeah, Duffy. yeah, listen, listen, listen. And, and I'm going to say this straight as a die, right? I hope, I, I really hope that anybody who watched the video understands that I, I, I've been there uh, to the graveside a couple of times, maybe mm. a, a few times. Um, and I've been there with, with an, another drummer that I've drummed with because we went, you know what, I'd really like to go and see, see where he's, he's, he's been put to rest. And I, I, I genuinely, genuinely, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've, I've had that opportunity. And I know that people like yourself and for other parts of the world would maybe like to pay tribute, pay respect, just a moment of silence and just just see that he's he's finally been put to rest mm. uh, at Canvas Nathan Graveyard. But what I would say is, what do you make of that guy in the video? He's like, uh, I'm not really into drumming. I'm like, but you're not any box, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know who the boxer guy is? I well, do, do you box? No. Everybody you know? knows the boxer. Everybody knows yeah, the boxer. Listen, this is the thing, right? And this is what this is what really kind of is, is kind of got me fired up a wee bit, right? Mm. So I'm thinking myself, right, that you get municipalities or wherever you live, you know, councils here in Scotland, and they put out what I can only describe as shit street art, right? You know, like. <laughs> um, you know, like, uh, they'll, they'll get some artist to do some sort of kind of modern art homage of a statue that means nothing and says nothing, and it's just like a bit of street art that just you can't sit on, you can't <laughs> put a bottle of beer on it. It's, it's just, just in the way. It means nothing. But, <laughs> but, they, spend a fortune, but they spend a fortune on it. Of, yeah. of guess what? My money. But here's the thing, right? <laughs> and I thought, and, there's, and, there's no, and there doesn't seem to be a kind of return off it. And I thought, I genuinely think this. I'm serious about this. I would honestly love to see a statue of Alex Dothart put up in Canvas Nathan or New Mains um, and just a focal point for people to go and say, this is a guy that's done great work. He's a genius type thing. He needs to be reflected. If you can get one, I'm not take, I said it in the video, I'm not taking away from the guy that's the boxer, Jim Murray, good on him. He can have but, it too. <laughs> and, and, and the same the same breadth, get get a statue of Alex Dothar. Yeah. And I know for a fact, if I was a band visiting oh. Belfast or Toronto or wherever, I'd be like, you know what? Pipe Band 40 at the Alex Dothar sta let's statue. Let's get the whole crew around. Let's, get a, whole, let's get a whole crew down there. Let's get a, let's get a obligatory 40. At least the drum or after, Yeah. Before the worlds or after the worlds, yeah. we get the photograph, and then, uh, and whilst we're here, does oh, anybody want a can of Coke? Does anybody want a packet of crisps? Does anybody <laughs> want a can of lager? Guess what? That's money going back into the Boost community. the economy. What is, what is wrong with people? Seems like then? a no-brainer so, to us. But listen, I'll tell you what, if people want to write, start putting your name down in a, a, a comment saying, I like the idea, because somebody needs to take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. I know that, and I, I, listen, and I, I know this as well, that some people, bizarre enough, right, some people that maybe don't know who Alex Duffer is and unaware or don't, don't see the value in the drumming, that's fine. But by and large, I think it's a good thing. I don't think in this day and age of controvers you know, controversial statues, <laughs> I don't actually think that he's a controversial nope. person, right? Um, and it, it's just untold, the, yeah. the ripple in the pond of drumming. And I mean that in the, the, the broadest church mm. that, he's, that he's made. I mean, especially for the local the community. And ah, if, man, listen, and if, if pipe bands about anything, they're about community, aren't they? That's what we've already said. But the, the thing is, is that let's um, get that statue up. That's what I'm saying. The this, man this needs, needs a statue. To, this needs to be part of the show's drive. We need people that watch the show, all ten of them in a dog called spot, <laughs> to start saying to people, "We want a letter. We want this." I don't know what council is, North Lanarkshire or South Lanarkshire, whatever it's I think South Lanarkshire, South Lanarkshire Council, seems to, instead of putting up a statue with a dog that's shaped like a star that's fell off a brick, why don't you spend money putting a statue to a guy that we can go, that's a statue of a guy that done something that's quite good. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's do it. Um, so let's, let's focus I, on that. That's, that's, our year, that's our year project. 
I would I would be one of those people who would go and see it because I now know a little bit about Alex Duthert, thanks to you, you, my good friend here. Um, basically, I just had a quick Wikipedia. You learn a few things, you know how he how he learned how many how many world champs did he win? By the way, uh, well, as solo as he done, solo world championships as a solo drummer, he done six. He's six. Uh, and he and he, he took three. The thing is, he took three different calls uh, to world champion world champion calls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he obviously he's, he makes prolific pipe band. Like band wins was with Shots and Dykehead. Mm. But um, and the other thing is, the, the, the key thing is, is obviously he was kind of snatched uh, from the world a wee bit, I would say, early. Sure. Um, and so, therefore, whilst he was doing the stuff he was doing with British Caledonian mm. uh, in the 80s, and that's when he was going to America. And mm -hmm. So British Caledonian was an, an, an airline company, which is now defunct. But they actually had the, the great, uh, foresight to understanding that if we can get a pipe band mm -hmm. playing at a major arena, major sports arena in the United States, and it's televised from the West Coast to the East Coast, yes, we can't afford that advertisement on a TV commercial in the United States, right? So they're like that. This is a no-brainer, right? So they that that was the whole kind of essence of the British Caledonian pipe band. It was like. You know, a, a walking advertising, yeah, of, yeah, 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 of the band, which, 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 basically, that's hey. what sponsorship pipe bands is all about. Um, so moving forward for that, guarantee. I mean, it's a kind of one of the things that never happened, but it was expected that obviously he would have won the world mm. with British Caledonian. That's right. Didn't because run his time. Another thing that I <clears throat> learned, I, I know we were talking about uh, Doctor Fritzberger before. So basically, yeah. is athlete Alex Duthart is kind of attributed to, you know, bringing in, revolutionizing pipe band techniques by doing a bit of, bringing in some of the back sticking, the stick clicks, making it a yeah, bit more it, interesting. And it's, it's that whole, it's that whole Basel thing. And you've been in Basel, I've been in Basel. He incorporated the it, Swiss element into, yeah, take, he, he made the connection. It, it in, I taking it in and saying, can we use that in pipe band stuff? Would that yeah. fit in pipe band? Big man, well, the answer is, yeah, yeah of course you yeah. can. I mean, my, my, my thing that really kind of floats my boat uh, is the fact that, I mean, obviously in a modern day sense, right, this is the other weird thing, right, so you got to remember that back in the day, it was difficult for, you know, internationally, people to kind of, like, I know it sounds crazy, but no people or have mm, kind of communication yes. with people because you don't have the internet you don't have yeah. you know you don't have that sort of connectivity you've got to imagine what life's back like back in the, like, the kind of 60s and 70s no idea you know what I mean <laughs> so the, the the thing that amazes me is like Joe Morello right the famous jazz drummer right one one of the best <laughs> jazz yeah. drummers right knew Alex Nuffer they, so they this is something they broke. They broke bread. He would be like, oh, "I love all this stuff. I like what you're doing," and he'd yeah. be like, "Yeah, I like what you're doing." And you just think to yourself, "I mean, that is that is mega. That is like really out there." No, no, it's the the modern thing is is it would be easy for me to kind of I don't know Facebook somebody that was really good and say, "Hi, I'm Andy Laird. I really like what you've done," and they write back and go, "I thanks, mate." But <laughs> yeah. It would be different. It'd be a lot, you know. It'd be a lot different then because then there would need to be people of stature or equal stature and say, right, listen, I really like what you've done, and I, I, I kind of like this. I mean, the Dave Brubeck, you know, quartet, the, the million, the million dollars first selling jazz album. That drummer, and if you YouTube that, we should, we should leave a link to that. The, yeah. the, the, the drumming that he does on that it's Drum sublime, Rally. unreal, it's sublime. Right, yeah. and here just just to big him up, right? This is a jazz drummer that John Bonham, when he first went to the United States of America, the first guy, the first guy he wants to see when he gets off the plane is who? Joe Morello. Right. So you know what I mean? That's, right. So th th this is th this is and he's people bumping you know, shoulders with Alex. Duffer. And he's bumping so Alex Duffer. over in Lanarkshire. He's like, I, 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 Alex Duff. I know that guy. He's good at this pipe band thing. Wow. You think yourself. And you know, I mean, and and gods are drumming. Yeah, they're getting half planes to go and see Joe Morell, and yeah. Joe Morell's like, ah, oh, yeah, I know that guy, Scottish guy, he's doing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so 
it just it just adds the credibility of the of the drum capability of the guy, you know. This is a big thing for me. Obviously, I'm going through this Wikipedia thing and I'm looking through and it and apparently Alex Duffett took a wee break after you know winning a few championships to join a a like play drum kit. Well, see, this, not? like, we, the, the, this is, the, yeah, this is the thing. He never took a break, as in from the point of view that Alex Dothert was always a k- kind of a kit drummer. That's what he'd done. He, he played wow. kit drummer and then he'd, he'd done dance, dance hall, big swing, big bat, you know, big jazz. Kind of, awesome. That's, that was his thing. Best stuff. Um, and so, listen, it's not that I'm a, there's some sort of aficionado on the life and works of Alex Dothert. I'm just saying that, yeah. What we, what we need to keep in focus here, is a the guy's footprint or handprint uh, on the drumming world was yeah, was quite massive. was was in, no it wasn't quite it was impressive it was massive yeah, yeah and I know that people will say ah oh, yeah but you know like for instance Jim Kilpatrick's won the, the solo drumming more times than Alex Duffer that's mm. it's not it's not that kind of competition no it's just the thing that we're saying that look this guy you know dropped dropped a big massive ripple in the water for pipe band drumming. And I think just as just as more important, and obviously you're standing on the shoulders of giants like Paddy Donovan, uh, you know, the the people that were, you know, Bert Bart, all these other drummers that were, were there in the shadows and, and and people that are the pipe band drummers know of them. My point is, is that, you know, people like Alex Duffert that had the, the foresight to take snap bits from, you know, jazz, snap bits mm. from what he was doing as a drum kit. And then obviously the, the musicality Mm. Of understanding that I want, I, I want to achieve this sound with my core, and I'm taking the musicality of what's achieved in jazz kit drumming, what's achieved when I'm playing the kit drum, and I can transfer that and create a new dynamic sound as a drum core. I, it's, to me, it's crazy because it's like. It's, it seems as though when you're playing, like you only want to focus on one thing just to become great at that, right? Um, and with pipe band drumming, you know, you 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 practice all your rudiments and you're trying to get really good hands, right? And get yep. that good sound out of it. Yep. And as a kit drummer, you begin to neglect, you know, your kick foot, like playing playing with your foot and actually, you know, playing around the kit, actually using all the different colors that a kit provides. But to hear that Alex Duffett, you know, one of the greatest revolutionaries that we're talking about here, actually did both. For me, is is like, well, you can, and you, and if listen, anything, you should. Listen, the the whole thing is, is I don't think it's a. It's not. There's not one person, in any sort of environment, whether it be a tuba playing or whatever it is, right. Mm. You'll normally find there's not one person that's done everything that's made it all change, right? But but you've got, but what you always have are people that come along and make a difference and make it sound right. different, do difference, right? So I'm not trying to kind of disregard previous drummers that Alex Dothert would, would have taken inspiration from. I'm not saying that they're any less, and I'm not saying that people have came after them, or any less. I'm just saying that it's it's a it's a bit of a shame that such a large kind of stature in, in drumming has they had the, the, they've not even done the decent thing in the, the area that he came from, you putting up some sort of kind of I don't know, stone statue, big drum, I don't know. Mm. I mean I, I just I just think to myself, why no? Why not? What, what would you need to do to get a statue? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I I think uh, I think that would be a, I think that would be fitting, mm. and I think it'd be good. I think it'd be a good thing for people from all around the world or whatever. You know, who's that guy? It's Alex Duffer. Oh, is he doing a drummer? I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, hey, speaking of great drummers, we yes, um, I'd love to. I would love to be the guy. Go speaking of great drummers. Yes, Andrew. Luke, uh, that's not happening. <laughs> no, it's not, happening us, it's not happening for us, mate. It's not happening for us. Speaking of great drummers, not you, obviously. <laughs> what? Not you. Next guy, yeah, he's one I prepared earlier. No, um, we actually know a great drummer, don't we? Listen, around this, this side guy, of the world, this guy from the other side of the world is an Atipadean legend. 
Wait, the, Wait are, you, are, you talking, intro... are you talking about me or? Oh, no. how, how are you worse? How are you worse, are you... my friend? <laughs> What are you doing? Right, so <laughs> he actually he actually stays in the good part of the world. He stays in New Zealand. He's a Kiwi. Never heard of it. <laughs> he's a Kiwi. He's a big fish. Yes. Uh, I've known him for a few years. Uh, and too. he's played with a lot of, he's played with a lot of greats. And his name, of course, is Mr. Mark Weir. Drumheads, Mark Weir. So see for people that don't know you, Mark, right? Which I don't think there's going to be many folk that don't know you, right? <laughs> the people that don't know you. Try and get well, how would you introduce yourself to drummers? How would you say, well, I mean, what have you done? I know you I know you're a big fish, but I mean, how would you kind of <laughs> no. how would you, you know, I mean, only, how would you, in our, only in our small pond here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mark. How many times have you been in that, like a, a pipe band trophy kind of scenario? How many times he's, he's won something? You know, how many times have you you won anything solely? What what what's the kind of stuff? What kind of things have you done, mate? So I've won all the solo competitions here several times. Yeah, um, I've got thirty six national championships in fifty years of uh, competing. Yeah. Um, 36 uh, championships. Yeah, yeah man. you heard the man. Gold, Get gold. Like to, the top, the top yeah. level you can. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like, right. so like, what... he's been winning more than he's been, been kind of playing almost. <laughs> that's it. Kicking, um, that's true. kicking goals with both feet. That's what they call that, isn't it? Yeah. It's brilliant, man. Brilliant. Um, I don't know. Well, I've been playing since I was 10. Yeah. And I've played in all the grades now, and I've won championships in all the grades. Well, listen, listen. Nothing left I, to do, I, I, eh? And listen, <laughs> listen, it, I, it's exhaustive because obviously I don't want to sit here. And I know that obviously, I, I don't know if you're a bit like me, Mark, I, I, I like a good talk, but it's, it's actually hard to talk about what I've done because yeah. then you feel as if you're blowing your own trumpet. You uh-huh. know what I mean? I feel yeah, like, yeah. who has... Who's this guy? Who does he think he is? Well, listen, it is quite an impressive, it is quite an impressive repertoire. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. is, it is noteworthy. Sit so, so up and listen to this. People like me so, have to hear this kind of stuff to know that that is even possible. Because, you know, where I'm standing, you look at all those accolades, and you, it's like looking into the solar system and just being like, okay. I mean, trying uh, to-, <laughs> to be fair, there's a lot of guys who play a very long time and never get one. So yeah, that's true. true. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's like that's like a guy called Andy Lear, I don't know. He's in, he's in that boat. <laughs> playing for playing for years. He I, I know maybe, that guy. Maybe that reflects his actual drumming ability, but you know what I mean? You could argue I that. don't think so. It's it's more his mental ability, I reckon. I can't <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we could get the conspiracy going, he's just hated. <laughs> the most, he's just hated. Mine are, um, he's just hating. <laughs> I've done a bit in Australia, like some are minor Australia and Grade one in Australia and uh, solo yeah. in Australia too. Yep. But, Take um, over my country as well. Far out. Great. Um, Mark, sorry, can I right? So basically what I was going to say is this, right? So obviously the 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 the, the raft of applaud is is massive. Uh, and I know that people need to get this around their head, right? So if people are watching and they don't know about pipe bands or they don't know about pipe band drumming, right? Which they might well be. Yep. Um, that obviously New Zealand, Australia, Canada, right? Uh, all out with Scotland, which you kind of me- me- mentally think, oh, that must be where people are good pipers or drummers. But obviously, that's not necessarily the case. That people are fantastic in that sphere, far out with the countries. I mean, far out with what you would expect, like Scotland, kind of, or, or uh-huh. Northern Ireland, right next day is obviously punching out drummers like you can't, you can't predict. So, uh, just to give you a wee flavour, I was in New Zealand once. I was I was, I, 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 you, you're probably over. I think it was Masterton. Is it Masterton? Yeah. Right. Yeah, 2000. So I went, I went there and it was like in a championship. And I think that was in the, I think it was like 99, 2000 or something like that. 2000. Well, put it, put it this way, right? You could still Mark buy. Mark knows exactly a, when it was. You know, <laughs> listen, you could, you could still buy a Kiwi burger. Right. McDonald's. Well, they've just, they just brought that back. Have they? Oh, there you go. Right. If you if you hang about long enough, it comes back in fashion. <laughs> so the Kiwi burger's back, Mark. Right. Right. Kiwi burger's back. Does that that doesn't sound good? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I liked it. 
Well, it's got beetroot in it, isn't it? Yeah, beetroot in it. Ah, it's good, man. It's good. Listen, I'm actually going to book my flight the now to come back on the basis McDonald's has got the Kiwi Burger back. Well, there's two. There's a there's a, a ordinary Kiwi Burger and an Angus Kiwi Burger. So it's got an oh. Angus uh, patty. It's a bit of Scotland in there as well. Oh. <laughs> listen, look at his advertising. Look at his advertising, the, the Golden Arches. Right, listen. McDonald's what was going to say? Uh, listen, Mark, do you need to get a commission for that? People will be like, listen, <laughs> Mark Weir's reference, Mark Weir has suggested that we go to McDonald's at Auckland to it. buy a Kiwi burger. We're all Thank going, bags, in, the ca- in the car, kids, in the car. <laughs> Mark said it, let's go. Right, listen, so let's go back to, let's go back to when you were a kid, Mark, right? Let's, right. let's start at the start kind of thing. Yep. So, um, first start, he says, when you were 10. Uh-huh. Which, which pipe band was that and who do you remember teaching you? Can you remember? My dad. My dad's right, okay. uh, right. And that was in the Tower Band, which is now called Red Hackle. All right. Yeah. No, do guys? Uh, so, yeah, my first Nationals was in 1973. In C grade it was in those days. Right. Okay. Um, and then I was – so that was – yeah, I was – that was in C grade. I was headhunted into the city of Wellington in about 77, I think it was. And then I spent right up till 1990 with them. Right. Um, so that was where there was a lot of the trips to the world, um, trips to Edinburgh Tattoo, yeah. and I mix that, uh, making records, fun oh, making wow. records. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Did you, uh, is, that a, is that a sense of sarcasm there? <laughs> you hate oh, no, no, no. Just thinking about how it was done. I mean, there, there's one record out there that's called, oh, I think it's called The Road to Edinburgh. But anyway, it was a fundraiser for getting to Edinburgh. And we yeah. did it in the oh. Symphony Orchestra studios, but with one microphone. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Must have been a good microphone. And, and everybody's like, right, could could you could you could you move in a wee bit? Could you, right, yeah, that, that's how they choose it. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how, they, that's how they set the balance up because there was just one microphone. So they moved. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Imagine I, the whole pipe band rocked up and they're like, you, you know, there's like more than <laughs> four people. Here. Is that like, there's, there's more than one is? <laughs> Listen, uh, see, 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 in the reference of the subject of more than one of us, right? I was with. I was uh, I was invited to go to Virginia, right? We uh-huh. um, four Scots, right? Yep. yep. And so the, the the name of the band is the first uh, the four Scots pipes and drums, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, we were in we were told at the end of the Virginia tattoo we had to go around and play for the military attaché in his back garden type thing. You know, the, you know the kind of yeah, format, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cocktail, cocktails and drinks kind of. Oh, 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 how are you? How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> so, well, they went, right? right. So um, we went to that. So anyway, we, t- we tripped up at the door. So uh, the, the pipe major at the time, um, um, what's his name, Grant? Uh, Peter Grant. Nice guy, by big beard. Not. He taps the door and he's like, hi, uh, it's, uh, we're a pipe band. It's, we're here. She's like, all right, come in. So she, she beckons him to come in. And uh, she's like, there was, as he went in the door, she's like, right, okay, uh, there's a there's the seats there and there's a couple of drinks. She's like, so there's 40s. He's like, no, there's about 30 years. She's like, it's <laughs> four Scots. So she says, I got, I got the email, four Scots. He's like, that's the name of the band. That's the, that's the name of the regiment, four Scots. I love it. She thought there was four And how racist is that? In so many levels. She's like, four Scottish guys. That come in to play the That'll do. That'll do. We just four have Scots. those things. She's like, I thought she was going to commit me. You people next. That's too, too I many, mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, oh, really? I think you need a wee bit of re education then. Let's get that story. Mentalist. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, right. Listen, that is a true story. Somebody can cross take that. Right? Milk can cross take that story. Um, so, back to you, Mark. Right. So, um, here's a question for you, right? So, starting off, uh, obviously, it was your old man that was teaching you. Um, and then, what what can I how often were you practicing? Do you think that you practiced excessively hard? Um, knowing as an adult now, 
what your kind of volume of traffic should be. So, like, you know, I would say on average, maybe an hour to two hours a night for, like, if you could ideally, that, that, that would be good. But I know that as an adult, you've got other things in your way. But whereas as a kid, you've got less distraction. Yeah. Do you think, but do you think personally that you you were super wrapped in your practice time? Or do you think, what do you think? Or do you think you're, or do you think I you're just one of these guys that are gifted at it? I, I need to paint you a picture because in those days we had tiny little drumsticks yep. uh, and a block of wood to practice on. Yeah. And I, I just had the, I just had the, the block of wood on the on the table and every time I went past it, I'd pick the sticks up and play. So nice. I, I didn't necessarily sit for hours and hours and hours, but I would have done a couple of hours a day at least. Yeah. Yeah, in those early stages. Just Did it take to, yeah. some convincing for like you to get into it because your dad was doing no. it, right? No, my dad was in it. And also, uh, I guess you need to know the bigger picture because pipe bands over here, basically, there were two two reasons for a pipe band. One was in farming communities, they had pipe bands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other reason was guys who'd been in the army or been through the Second World War. So a lot of the structure here uh, post-war was military-based. So there was a lot of drill. There was a lot of mm. army-type connections. No, oh, you need to drop it, guys, Mark. They're dangerous. They're crazy <laughs> people. Get ready. But then, you, but then you had your, um, your farmers. So if you look at our timetable in New Zealand, our national contest is in March. And the reason it's in March wow. is because that's when the hay had been made and the farmers yep. were free to go to band and then come to practice, come to the contest. Right. That's how it all sort of went together. Because because March is a pretty peculiar time. It's right in the end of the summer, um, you know, in relation to other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a crazy time. And what it means is our season gets broken in half because we have a, like a pre-Christmas few competitions and then – the big ones are after Christmas. So, um, so that's it's a why. Bit like that. But what happened was that the a lot of these guys that were ex-army uh, obviously pushed a more military style of playing, slings, um, pushed the drum along with your knee. Uh, nothing, oh, yeah. uh, nothing was written down at all. It was all... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, in 1970... One, a guy called Wayne Hobbs, who was uh, at that time, he was the leading drummer for the city of Wellington, who were the top band uh, in the country. He headed off to Scotland and he went to live with Joe Noble yeah. and played in Babcock for two years. And that was a major turning point because he brought back all the modern style if you like so up to that point everything was paradiddles and double paradiddles and yeah let's carry on but uh in the early 70s when wayne came back uh he bought one one he bought written music back and began to teach that and in the beginning that written music was all written above the line it was one line but all the hands were above the line so yeah yeah it wasn't till uh alec Duther got in tow with with uh, Fritz Berger, that mm -hmm. we got the monolinear system with the stick uh, right and the left above and below. Yeah, but that brilliant. didn't come. That didn't come for another, I don't know, five six years into New Zealand. Originally, we got the notes and the note values, but everything was above the line. Yeah, and so at that point, everybody that played, especially at the top level, everybody that played could busk really well because we learned from we boys by copying yeah, yeah. on record uh -huh. and then, yeah, 100%. then the uh, the music we started to teach from music um and and in actual fact uh th this has only come to light recently we've we've really pushed the point hard that people had to learn to read music which is great in one sense the problem we've caused ourselves now though is that <laughs> The youngsters can't play without it. Yes, yeah. and there's there's uh, there's an element of ah uh, you've lost the kind of the snap of using your loaf maybe, uh -huh. and if and it's listening. not written, 
Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Maybe but because I, I, there's only a certain amount you can put on paper. So, particularly with our sort of drumming, a lot of it is feel. A lot of it is the way you deliver it. So, yeah. if you've learned literally, it's a bit like somebody reading a book in a monotone way. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to the park. You know, that's, Christmas yeah, cracker jokes. Paper, yeah. <laughs> Jan- <laughs> Janet and John book, Mark. That's what it <laughs> <that> is. <laughs> hey, this is actually this is interesting, right? Because I'm. I'm part of that breed. You know, I came into pipe bands. They gave me a sheet of music. And I said, easy, I can learn this. Mm-hmm. And it's just one line. Yeah. Um, but now I'm I'm going through music that's, you know, simple to complex. But that actual act of turning over the paper is really hard. It's like yep. trying to wean yourself off the heroin. Not that I've done that. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you take yep. away the paper. <laughs> Well, that's still, right, yeah, because anyone you know what that's like, or... you know, <laughs> I, had to, I had to clean myself up last night to come on the show. So I, I, I managed to do it up the night. Off it. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, that, that was a turning point here because uh, when Wayne came back, he he went round, because the, the way the, the pipe bands are, are uh, arranged here, the, each major centre has a group of bands that that function together, if you like, and and they are called centres. Oh. And then uh, there's a, the main body. So Wayne would go round all the centres and run workshops for people to teach them how you know the beginnings of how to read and composition and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he brought things like uh, single sticking, like single fives, and and so now we had a mixture of. Scores with singles and a uh, bit of doubles and paradiddles and that kind of thing. That's coming yeah. from Fritz Berger and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's all their stuff. Well, that came that came a wee bit later. So yeah. Alec Duthart came out here the first time in 1974. No, sorry, 1977. And he bought a lot of what he was playing at the time. And he he was just he just oozes music anyway. He could play oh. the simplest little t- uh, little reel or something, but yeah, I mean, the, the, what's written on the paper would never do justice because the man played it straight from his heart. He was just yeah. awesome. Yeah. But he would He's teach feeling it. as well. You know, he would teach people. He would sing and teach you. Uh, he'd say, oh, do you think so? You know, <laughs> and, and, no, that way, son, he'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so he would teach as much as off the paper he would teach uh, he would take teach by singing and explaining. Now, yes. he did a tour around the country in 77, and then he came back again in 85, and that's when he stayed with me. So I spent a lot of time with him. He was here for a couple of weeks, and um, he did a, a couple of workshops in Wellington where I was at the time, but I also took him to other places and he did workshops. So I, I had a, a lot of time with Alex the man as much as Alex the drummer, which which mm. for me is um, a real treasured memory and something that's pretty special. Yeah, uh, because it, it, it's, 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 it's a big it's a big deal that isn't it? I mean, like yeah. um, I mean, there's 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 many people that know of Alex Duthert, and now as the years go on, there's fewer and fewer people. Yeah, mm. I think that can a real physical connectivity with them. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it's it's kind of like guys that have played in his core, like your Arthur Cooks and all that, people are actually kind of kind of know him. But you know, it's 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 obviously becoming more distant and it's hard. The guy is of a legendary status. Yeah, definitely. So it, yeah, it, so the, I mean we're not kind of overplaying. I don't I don't think I'm overplaying that. I think that's you know, the guy is legendary status, which is one of these words that people fire up too easy. Oh, he's a legend, that guy, because he gave me a cigarette when I need it one, you know what I mean? <laughs> <It's>, you know, <laughs> I mean, well, oh, legend, thanks. You know what well, I mean, I mean that's legend. if you're giving <laughs> him a bounty bar, you'd have been his main man. That was his favorite. Oh yeah. Is it I funny? I, a sh- but, but was it a dark bounty or a milk bounty? There's, there's two. And the milk one. There's milk the blue one. Yeah, it's got to be milk. Oh, the blue one, right. Okay, there you go. Ah, <laughs> so, uh, what was he going to say? So actually getting a wee bit of a FaceTime with him and uh, work, uh, obviously he stayed at your place. Do you think that, do you think that catapulted your drumming? Do you think that kind of oh, yeah. shifted, yeah, shifted yeah. the gear drum, shifted it down and moved because I feel like you would have learned like some drum stuff from him, but you also would have learned you know, like, how he's thinking as a musician and as a person. Yeah, that's that's been a 
big theme in my learning because I was lucky enough to have firstly Alec, but then um, he was in here in 85, but by 88, Jim Kilpatrick had come out to judge and I made friends with Jim and have been close friends ever since. Yeah, And most of my time with Jim has been sitting, talking, uh, having a cup of tea and, uh, you know, not, not so much thrashing it out around the table as, mm. as listening and talking and understanding what he meant when he wrote things down and, yeah. and um, how the feel should be. And I wouldn't say in any sense that I'm an expert at what he's written, but it certainly uh, was my my direction. I tried really hard to emulate what he was doing um, and style-wise especially mm. uh, and, and musically very much. But that, but what I was going to say with with Duthart when he came back in '85, by that time he had met with Fritz Berger, so he got Fritz Berger across. And at that time, Shots was one of the only bands that had their own band room because the mine it was the mine and the miners yeah, yeah. had this band room for them. And uh, and Alec was the most incredible storyteller. No. And he told us the story about uh, himself and, and Fritz Berger <laughs> outside that band room, marching up and down on the driveway and, and trying to sh- show each other what they were doing. So at that point in time, you get yet another revolution because mm-hmm. you've got, uh, you, you went past your single sticking. Now you've got a whole lot of those Swiss uh, movements introduced, including open roll work and uh, you know, Swiss stroke and ruffle and all those things. Mm. None of that used to be in any of the scores. So that all came flooding in as well. And there's one famous score that Dathart plays for it's a, a tune called Crossing the Minch. Mm. And if you've ever heard the recording, you probably can still get it. But there's a thing he plays in the fourth part of the tune, and it's a syncopated thing. And it's beautiful. It just rocks along with the tune. And we tried for months with our cassette recorder <laughs> playing that part over and over and over to try and figure out what the hell he was doing. You couldn't slow it down or anything, eh? Well, no, you could. <laughs> but but what the funny thing was, when he came in 85, we said, for God's sake, <laughs> it's out of our misery. You know, what the hell are you doing in there? And it was You met up at the airport just like. <laughs> <laughs> but it was what he was actually doing was so simple, uh, but really, really effective. And yes. you know, and so that that sort of stuff was brilliant because he well, actually, when he climbed off the plane in Wellington, he said to me, Who's this so-and-so guy <laughs> from Invercargill? And I said, Oh, yeah, he's one of the drummers down there. He said, Well, he's getting down the street playing my JK Ken score and he's telling everybody it's his. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> The first beef. Oh, <laughs> I bet he was livid, by the way. I'd be raging. <laughs> yeah. See, that's quality, by the way, because, you know, I mean, I, no, like, listen, it doesn't matter how legendary or how amazing you are, right, as a, as a person. You can be a good person, right? But yeah. we all know that even even good people snap. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, a good, I'm a good guy and I snap now and again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, now and again. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is, is you know what I mean it's like so everybody comes out and goes oh let's not for a great guy a great guy oh what, 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 I'm a legend and all but in truth you know what I mean the, the, there must have been things that really kind of really bore, bore down on him do you know what I mean and, and annoyed mm. him and as, and as a drummer Mark like of, of your own stature you know what I mean you must you must appreciate it if, if you've done something and, and you've created something um, it must really kind of grip you that somebody's <laughs> trying to take plaudit for it. Oh, but is yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, is he, that not the high, they say that's the highest form of flattery, right? Is imitation. But yeah. even yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you think but there's a difference between flattery? There's a difference between uh, imitation and rip off. And true, true. You see, and, and well, try to say, oh, I, that's my own work. That's the yeah. that's the issue. Yeah, it's that's not true. imitation when you put your own name on it <laughs> and then tell someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, that's. I mean, and of, I and of course, I, what he was playing was nothing like the true score anyway. It was just a... It was savaging you know, it, probably. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? That's a- <laughs> but that's, um, that's sort of... 
also swung the door open for me because once I got to know Jim, oh, actually, I got, I got to know Jim in 87 because we went to Scotland in 87. So that was the famous year that the Australian guy, Alan Chetto, judged the Worlds. And it's the first time that the um, drumming in the World Championship went offshore because that was uh, 78 phrases winning yeah. the, the Worlds. And I think, three, huh? I think Simon Fraser won the drumming. I, 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 they were all in there anyway. So I was there when that happened. But when I went on that trip, um, Jim introduced me to a lot of the guys at the time. So Joe Noble, uh, Eric Ward, uh, James King, um oh blimey. Uh Jackie Holden. Yeah. All, all the guys and Tom obviously Tom, because Tom's uh Jim's uncle. So yep. Tom introduced to Tom and and the kids were playing, Gordon and Sandra so, were playing. These are yeah. like would you say, you know, the head honchos, like the disciples of the yeah, yeah, yeah. world at the time, yeah? Yeah. So I was really quite lucky to get to meet those guys. Yeah. And the other thing that happened in 87 was mm-hmm. that's when the HTS 200 came out at um, Arbroath in 87. Yeah. And Jim had 12 of those made in the factory. So six of them he had for his shots core and the other six he gave to people around the world. So I've actually got one, um, and a handmade HTS 200 because it was one of the prototype ones. You need about a 10 ton truck to carry it, but yeah, is this uh, a snare drum? Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Keep yeah. up, Jace. Keep up. No, it's a tambourine. <laughs> what are you talking about? A drum pad? Yeah, maybe? snare drum. No, it's a tenor <laughs> drum. Mark, we have the famous tenor drum. I thought he was That's upgrading nice. from that wood box that he was drumming on before. <laughs> so I mean, that was that was again another revolution because that was the first of the drums with the floating top head, uh, you know, floating top section, and the removable um, uh, the snare mechanism as well. The yeah, ball, but the, no, no, the, the removable the, shell. Yep. We're about through it. And so, uh, yeah, I still have that amongst my treasures. Um, nice. And the other thing that I was able to do through that connection was, uh, and, and he still hasn't forgiven me, but, um, I ordered a set of drums for A and D when I was a leading drummer there, and I ordered lacquered shells because they did lacquered shells for all the kit drums, but the pipe band yeah. drums always had laminate wrapped around the wood, mm. and I figured that if I got laminate shells, <clears> I'd probably get a bit of a sharper pitch, la la la. So I um, talked him into it and ordered them, and he's still never forgiven me because really? after well no after that everybody wanted. Uh, you know, uh, just, just uh, polished shells, and no, there was no more laminate or anything. <laughs> so that was classic too, because I got those drums in '95. They were beautiful emerald green pearl drums, and that was the one year that the worlds went from Bella Houston Park, where it had been since Adam was a boy, um, right, and right. It was in transition, and it went yeah. to Scottston, which was Actually, a Bella. Yeah. Yeah, and the track at the velodrome was brick dust. So my beautiful <laughs> emerald green drums, by the end of the day, w- w- had all this orange dust. Yeah, it's horrible. It's all over horrible. and it never came away. It never, uh, never get rid of it. Maybe you want that though. That's the earning your stripes, isn't it? No, no. You go there and you got the brick dust on, and it's like, hey, check this out. Yeah, <laughs> you got to have the dust. Uh, right, so. What I was going to say is, is uh, right, so we've, listen, we've, we've spoke about, like, uh, obviously, kind of the, the drums and cores, and I've mean, got a question for you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you don't need necessarily name and shame, right? But oh, has there been, any, has there been any, has there been any drum core, right? Genuinely, right? Has there been a drum core or, or outfit that you've been with and you thought, I can't, I can't work with these guys? Not working. Or, uh, I, need, I, need to, I need to find a move for. Is it? Do you know what I mean? Is it? Oh, I mean, yeah. How have you, have you? Do you know what I mean? How have you dealt with that? Have you? You know what I mean? You've been a core. So I mean, obviously you've you've been pretty successful. Like you said, we've been for for so long. But I mean, there's been times like obviously when you maybe not had the, the wielded the authority or you've not wielded. Do you know what I mean? You've not been in that position. And you thought I, I can I can't work with this. This is yeah. And how have you? Not, not including me, Mark. Not including me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, he's he said, I need to send Jason. I need to send Jason Gunning to do like that guy. <laughs> one, one of the things I did uh, fairly early in my career, I got involved with teaching. And uh, I always was brought up with the philosophy that somebody was teaching me. So uh, the deal with knowledge is the, the, the only thing you can do with knowledge is get rid of it to someone else. Mm. And yeah. so I was being taught, and and very early on in the piece, I got busy and started teaching others myself. And that uh, I was quite, I guess, as a youngster, quite direct. <laughs> 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 and that that got me. Into, I like that. I like that. <laughs> quite, quite direct. <laughs> that, that got me into a few scrapes over the years because. Uh, especially as a youngster, it was reasonably difficult for people to tell me that I wasn't quite right. Oh, <laughs> uh, I've, I, c- I can't Who imagine did? that. I, I, I could imagine how that would feel, Mark. I couldn't. I couldn't understand how some dude think like that. Never happened. But um, <laughs> but then in terms of your other question, um, it drove it, it drove a little bit of a wedge within. The band at Wellington, and that's, that sounds really dramatic. It wasn't. Um, some of the guys in the Wellington core sort of looked at me and thought, well, who the hell are you? Why the hell do you think you should be out there teaching? Um, mm. And my answer to it was, well, simply because nobody else is. I, I didn't I didn't, and I don't claim any great, Yeah, uh, you know, I'm just me. I'm just a bloke, and I pop like the rest. <laughs> you know, it's it's just um, it's something that I've had, and it's something that I like to share. So mm. I don't I don't think of myself as any legendary sort of player. I've d- I've been around a long time. I've mm. been around the clock a lot of times. Mm. I've seen most types of human being at some point in that uh, in that time, and 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 I've had to grow up myself and and learn to to deal with people in a productive way. I mean, it's easy just to shout yeah. at them when they walk out the door, you know, but if you're yeah. trying to build a band and keep it all together, then much and all that you want to shout, you've got to bite your tongue sometimes. Such a big part of being a band. Yeah. But, but and, see, see, be honest with you, Mark, right? So here's a weird thing. Um, I'm going to try and, try and make this. Direct. So No, not direct. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to say that's right. So say basically is a, a lead tip, right? And, uh-huh. and I understand what you're saying about maybe a wedge, but who do you think you are? And you, you maybe get some like kind of two-way traffic where yeah. people are um, questioning your method or questioning mm. your technique or questioning... You know, the, the, the golden rule, the golden word here is, is questioning you, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I know in this day and age, right, where... Almost most pipe bands want to run an HR department. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. What did he say? Oh, he said my trainers look rubbish. Oh, did they? All right. He's he's out the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> guys, the guy's the pipe major. Uh, he's out the door. You don't need him. You slagged off yeah. your trainers. So what I mean is what, what I'm what I'm getting to in that, right? Is do you think that in the the practice room, right? In in the practice room, do you think that the vibe is is changed by being from being autocratic, where yes. I, oh, yeah. my, and 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 in my day, right when you went into the practice room, you don't speak, mm. you don't really get to speak, right? You just you're just one of the machines, right? Machines yep. don't talk. There's only that's one right. guy talking. That's the guy that's teaching, right? Yep. Or the, the lead tip, right? He's playing this. This is his way. Any mistakes? It's only him that discusses it. Yep. Um, and you don't think that in a sense the democratization of the back room can be a bit frustrating as well. Oh, totally. Um, firstly, if you can spell that, I'll be really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, even my kids know I can't spell. Right? Everybody knows that I can't spell. Hey, ask, ask Jason. See, when I'm texting, it's like, what is this guy? What is this guy writing? It's like, and that's a guy that can literally speak Chinese. He can't even read it. I mean? I thought you were speaking Chinese. <laughs> Listen, I'm a kid of the world, man. <laughs> I I think, hates, I she's um, a languages teacher. She hates the fact that I just make stuff up and I get away with it. You know what I mean? I, I, right, I, Mark, sorry. Go, right. go, go, go. 
I think it's it's part of staying in something for a long time. Mm. And, and the sadness for me now is that I know that a lot of cores are not even half as good as they could be because of the attitude that they carry and the, and the way that they do water everything down or make excuses why stuff doesn't get done. I mean, we life was different. We I didn't even play football, you know. We we just yeah. drummed. That's just what we drum. did. Yeah. See when you're seeing football, do you always mean soccer or you know, for, the, yeah. for the good and benefit of everybody in the world here? When you're yeah. saying football, do you mean soccer or do you mean rugby or do you mean I mean soccer. You mean soccer? I, I played soccer. soccer for a wee while, but but soccer had to move over when the drumming started because yeah. that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 and that's how I built my own uh, credibility, I guess. Mm. You know, I've seen about the guys slinging off at me for for having a go at teaching, but my self drive. Um, I worked really, really hard at my own technique, and again, I was lucky because Wayne Hobbs, for one, was a technical master, um, and he he was a rap over the knuckle sort of guy if you didn't get it right. So. Mm. I was put on a really good track early on in the piece and the, and I kept working at it. And so did the other guys. I mean, we won the, the drumming championship here 10 years in a row and that'll never be done again. You know, yeah. just yeah. Um, we worked hard and, and we were good. We also had a maybe slightly different philosophy in that we never used the word defend. So it was always about taking the championship, winning the championship. Oh. So you never you never put yourself in a position of going back the next year to defend the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. strategy you was it again. Still ag- it's still aggressive. You go and take it. Because yeah, yeah. If, you, if you sit back on your haunches. Starting from zero. Go, well, we've only got a we've only got to defend it this year. Someone will come and take it off you. But if you yeah. go out there and you make it your business to take it, then you can keep taking it and keep taking it and keep taking it because the mentality is right. The work gets done. The people know they have to do the work. And so, you know, the results come. I mean, we, we got in the Guinness Book of Records as the the most prolific winning band or something in the Southern Jeez. Hemisphere or some, something. Um, so just that, just, it's just a, just just that a slight way of thinking about it when you just ten, a quick one about Guinness Book of Records, right? Yeah. You're a mutt, right? So I'm going to say something, right? Guinness Book of Records, I'm starting to smell a rat here, right? And I'll tell you why. Norris McWhorter, the guy that's synonymous with the Guinness Book of Records show, he was a Kiwi, right? So right away I'm starting to think, he was a Kiwi, Mark's a Kiwi, maybe yeah. started doctoring the books just to make sure the Kiwis got it up there. Oh, pretty maybe much. That was a- Here <laughs> we go. <laughs> My uncle. <laughs> Is that, that Andrew Lennon on his case now? Yeah, he's on the phone. He's like, I, 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 know, I was just a blind called Mark. He doesn't even know about it. Oh, he's in. a terrible accent. It's a terrible accent. I done. It done it with a that? red face thing, man. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> but, um, the, um, the, hey, other so- thing that, the other thing that drove me, I'll come back and talk a little bit more about that, uh, that whole autocracy thing. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I still feel, and I come from a generation that that, that worked, and I still feel that the best cores have autocracy to a degree. It's it's been watered down, I guess, because you've got all these blousy people now who, you know, if they get a better, basically, if they get a better offer, then they won't go to band practice. They'll go to the better offer or what they think is a better offer. And and then they'll have all the excuses as to why they haven't done the work. And but they'll still tell you when they're half drunk that they want to be the best they can possibly be. And, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they've really before. got issues with themselves, I guess. And that, that in its turn affects uh, how good bands can be. But I do know that when I started to get involved with Alec and then later Jim, he couldn't understand how chill it was here, even in those days um, where we thought we were working hard. Oh, you know, com- compared to the Scots guys, uh, we were not working hard. You know, I mean, I, I've been there the week before the Worlds, where he had his course spread across. Well, you know, Andy had the course spread across Scotland and and even up to Aberdeen and what. And those guys would drive from Aberdeen to band practice. So it's a four-hour yeah. drive. They come down, 
they practice flat out for two hours and then they drive home and they did that every night for a fortnight before the world yeah so you know that when you talk about working hard and that wasn't uh that wasn't still trying to learn the scores they had the scores well off that was polishing 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 so, and and uh learning about uh composure and and the mind game which is yeah, you know, yeah. as, as you know is as big as anything else yeah 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 <clears throat> so i still prefer some kind of autocracy even when i'm teaching myself i like i like to have fun but i like a bit of structure and i like to get the work done um i find it frustrating if i end up with a room full of people who are i, I don't care how bad they are playing wise as long as they're yeah. trying to get better as long as they're yes. wanting to work to get better, yes. but if they all they want to do is say, "Oh no, I can't do that," or "No, no, I don't, I don't play it that way," or you know, you come across those sort of people all the time. Or the or the other classic is uh, the excellent music reader who'll spend their time picking holes in the music because you've missed oh, a, a three oh, off a trip oh, or something. Oh, you know? I hate them! I, right, yeah. That's that's one group of people are really that really frustrate me because. Um, you might put something down in paper. It might not make a thousand percent sense, right? But it's a it's a visual aid to what you're yeah. trying to explain, right? And and if people start and that's their main concern, I genuinely believe that they're in the wrong place. Yeah. Well, that becomes yeah. an excuse for things they can't play. Generally, uh, you know, yeah. it usually comes from somebody who's struggling, and so to divert attention away from the fact that they can't play, play that particular move. They'll start chiming all about the, the music from here or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm but that just, was just, where I was also quite lucky because uh, through this friendship that I got with Jim in 87, we set up um, the first, we had drummers retreats here in New Zealand. So we set up a five-year deal with him. And at that time, we had a, an Air New Zealand sponsorship, which was a return fair to Scotland every year. Oh, nice. So, so what we used to do is bring Jim out. For a start, we'd bring Jim out, and he and I would do a week in the North Island in a residential camp and then a week in the South Island Yeah, um, and, and do it all over again. And so and from my own point of view, where I got to do the learning was the night before the school he would arrive and he would just throw a whole lot of drum scores at me and say, right, that's what we're teaching. <laughs> So I'd never seen it. Yeah. And I had to try and get my hand, <laughs> hand around it. You know that? Hold on a minute. <laughs> yeah. And then and then but it was great. It was it was brilliant for developing myself. Yeah. But it also helped me develop my credibility because through doing that, I was able to sit and work with all the top drummers in the country. So it wasn't just me talking about it. I was actually sitting at the table and delivering it so they could see. That I wasn't, and and that included the guys out of the Wellington Corps who started out ragging me. Eventually, they got to see, oh yeah, we see what you're up to now, mm. and you know yeah. you can do it. So, so that was really really good. And what happened through that five years? The first couple of years, Jim came by himself. Then, the, and then the third year, the pipers could see that there was a lot of fun going on, and they were missing out. So, they they did a, a similar idea, but we refused to give up the drumming by itself. So we had, say, the week of drumming in the South Island and the Pipers were at the camp in the North Island. Uh, and then we swapped around. So swapped we, around, uh, good idea. So Rob good Madison idea. came out that third year. And it, that must have been about when Fiona started to come as well. And then the well, second year, I can't remember, third year, I think Willie came out with Jim. So now we had two guys from the Corps, and then after that, Barry came as well. So um, through that process, we managed to get, you know, several of the guys in the Corps out to to teach at that school. And um, we still have a summer school here. It's not quite the way I used to run it, but it still runs. And um, that was another, historically, that was another major change and style and uh, musicality, I would say, um, because this is where everybody changed their stick grip from 
one finger down the left stick and thumb over the top to the two yeah, fingers yeah, yeah. and mm. all the finger technique started to happen. So I guess for me, that was the third or fourth reincarnation of how I played because in the beginning it was all hold on tight and go for the doctor, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of stuff. I, I think I was just lucky to be in the right place at the right time and uh, and be with the right people and experience that. And you then, also made the most of it. Well, I, I yeah, I tried to do. I tried to make the most of it, and I tried to also constantly have this. Mm. You got to get it out there, push it out there, push it out there. Um, and and look, there are still people. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who think, "Oh, what a cock! What did he do that for? Why did he just do that? <laughs> But I, I don't really worry about that. I just i I don't just claim do it. to be. Yeah, I don't claim to yeah. be anything wonderful. I just I am what I am, and I give myself to. Whatever group, whether it's a workshop or a band or whatever the hell it is, the music, yeah, and I, and I just spill out my experience and you know try well, and that, make life better for them. That kind of that kind of brings us on our, our kind of next next phase, which I was going to say is <clears throat> so all that kind of the kind of block building in New Zealand that you've been you've been obviously talking about. What do you think New Zealand looks like in the future? Do you, what do you think, you know, do you, do well, you see it being strong and positive? Do you think it's in a good place? Do you think it's going to go from strength to strength? I'm, I'm, I'm mainly focusing on drum and pipe band drumming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I think, think it's, it's drifting. I think it's drifting at the moment because I'll be the last of the Mohicans, you know. The, the, all the people that I played with, uh, either judging or playing golf or drinking or whatever. You yeah, know? yeah. So, um there was a whole generation of us that grew up together, that played in different cores and that held the fabric together for a number of years. And there, there are less and less uh, youngsters. There are plenty of good players, but most of them will say, oh, but I don't want to lead the band. I don't want to, I don't want to have the responsibility of being a leader. I'll, I'm happy yeah. to play, but don't ask me to organise things or whatever. Yeah. There's that. But the good thing that's happened is that there's a young there's a, a young guy who well, he's not so young, he's in his twenties now. Um, I remember this boy when I used to go up t- to the north and run school holiday camps, and he won't mind me saying that he used to come to camp for several years as a as a really young kid, uh, and he couldn't put two notes together. I mean, he could barely play a three four, you know. Um, he has obviously done a lot of study and learning in that in the subsequent years and he's just done the season with the boggies so mm. he's gone from here where he was a good player he's won the open solo championship here uh, about three or four years ago uh managed to get himself a slot and he happened to turn up right at this changeover between gordon and kerr yeah, got, got right into the to the meat of that, uh, and I heard him play when he came back after the Worlds, and it just blew me away to see the difference between what he was able to do, which was really good before, and what he's able to do now. So, yeah. so that makes me feel good because he's one of several that are now contemplating doing that same sort of thing. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, is the current New Zealand solo champion, and she's just finished her degree. So she's, you know, thinking about what to do next, and mm. and I think that's high on the agenda for her is to get herself over there, and um, be, be, mostly because, well, Dad doesn't know anything anyway. That's the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the second thing, that's general rule of thumb, Mark. Isn't it? I mean, no. but the but the other thing is, um, she's not really tested here um she's not really stretched uh, as yeah. a player so she's been learning online from stevie shedden but um and and she plays with stevie in the hawthorne core but mm. you know she wants to drag herself even further than that and and the one thing i've said both of my daughters are very accomplished players my my elder daughter is a midsection player and she's absolutely brilliant and supreme mm. and uh does a lot of teaching too, does a lot of writing and music and that sort of thing. Um, but she injured herself a few years back. Uh-huh. And sadly for her, she still plays, 
but she's got to wear a moon boot when she gets on the park and it's absolute yeah. agony for her. So yeah. she probably won't get to live that dream of, of actually walking the grass with a grade one band in Scotland. But but my younger daughter will, I'm sure of it. And uh, that's nice for me because mm. obviously I'm in the afternoon of my um, – like I can still play. My hands are fine. Yeah. But my head's a bit scatty, you know. Remembering a whole repertoire is mm. it's hard. It gets harder and harder, Mark, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so I'm, I'm no, much feel. happier. Um, I'm much happier while I can still hold sticks. Um, I'll sit yeah. around the table with the littlies and and get them going. I'm happy to do that. It's, yeah, I don't have anything to prove as far as winning solo or, or band things. You know, I've pretty much done. What I, oh, I've never won the worlds, but uh, I've been there a few times. I think twenty out of the last thirty years I've been. So, well, I mean, like you said at the start, just the the key part of the knowledge is to pass it on, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah. Right, Mark. When's your next team you're going to be coming over? When do you think? Well, <clears throat> there's nothing committed at this point in time, but I'd like to think that I'll get over in the next couple of years. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we might <clears throat> we might have that Alex Duffett statue up by then, won't we? Excellent. Well, that's what I was going. That's what I was going to talk <laughs> about. So, <clears throat> and listen, I'm, I'm deadly serious about this. I know how many things I'm having a laugh. I'm outraged by it, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I just think that. Long story cut short, I just think you know, for that, for such a prolific guy, mm. Mark's it's obviously influenced Mark. He's obviously yep. influenced everybody, everybody in the world, and I just think, why is why is there no even like. You know, they blew, I don't know if they're dating like Australia and New Zealand, you know, like uh, Andrew Laird slept here once, blue yeah. plaque type thing, right? Yeah, yeah. They don't even have that up there. No. You know, you just, you know I mean, what well, we would that cost like about 10 quid or something like that? A, a brass, yeah. you know, like a, a, a metal plaque. Zzz, zzz, there you go, zip it in the wall. There you go. He, he walked by this shop once yep. to get a, a packet of fags. Yeah, I mean, and it, it doesn't even say it on the Mace Parade in New York. It doesn't even say this is where he fell. No, <laughs> but, you know it's, it's, it's just it's just so. I mean, the whole point is, is I mean, I'd like your support, Mark. If I put out a petition, <laughs> your your name on that petition will, will wait will be weighty. I, I, I would support. I'm gonna get a guy called I mean, Mark Weir. The blah what Mark Weir. In New Zealand, <laughs> sign that, that. That peasant, they'd say. <laughs> well, get, get them, get the New Zealand yeah, ambassador here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, hey, if, if but I this is what my inroads to the New Zealand ambassador. Do you know Mark Weir? Like, I don't know Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, he's a friend of the show. He's so, in the Guinness World Book of Records. <laughs> to get speaking to people in Scottish Parliament, I want that. I want that statue. Up. Well, you know, no, this is like what you're talking about with the next generation, though, isn't it? Almost yeah. like this statue. If people can go past the statue and see that and go, oh. I live in the town of one of the greatest pipe band drummers. Well, like, why shouldn't I pick you up know, the sticks? You know, um, after after Basel, I went to Italy. Yes. Yeah. And well, when I went to the Vatican City, everyone was saying, "Who's that baldy bastard next to Mark Weir?" <laughs> <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> why is he dressed like that? <laughs> Is you is it for Halloween? Is that guy? Is that, that guy still think it's Halloween? Is that what they were saying? It's a bit over the top, isn't it? Oh wait a minute! Let's see. We're going to watch. We're seeing here, people. <laughs> right, listen. Um, what was I going to say? I lost my ball. Uh, no, 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 I would. I would. I would I support the mad your, stuff, or not? I would <laughs> support your your um, immortalization of that man because we, the whole community has got something from him mm. you know and it's 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 the way of the world so i learn to do something i teach it to somebody hopefully that person does it better than i ever did it and then they add their wee bit and so it goes on and so um even though i started to play 50 years ago i can still hold my own now but not for much longer but the good thing about that is that other stuff has come along and, mm. you know, like he would be delighted, I think, to see some of the change that's come along and he would mm. be mortified at some of it too. Yeah. You know, because the la the latest sort of style of pitter-pattering and, and um, what I call cause that don't really commit, mm. um, that that's a disappointment to me because you know when when you take some of these big cores and they they have to take twelve pairs of hands out there and they play on 
average to poor instruments and they sound like four, you know. I mean, Shots used to Mark, go out there with five guys and win the world. Uh, Mark, 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 I've, I've discussed this, right? I've discussed this before, right? Yeah. And I actually, I'm going to say it again, right? So exactly what you're talking about, right? I'm, go, I'm going to ask this question, right? Now, there's, there's, there's amazing calls out there. There's, there's, there's relatively large calls out there that are really good. <clears throat> but here's where my science is, right? This is my science. This is Andy Laird's science. It's no fact, right? But I'm like that, right? So you've got like calls that are like, like numbers 12s, 14s and all that kind of thing, right? So mm-hmm. the, can you tell me that if, if you take all the guys, right, and you're like that, every day in the waiting room, like a doctor surgery, you're like that, drummer number one, and you come, one you play me an MSR yourself, right? And they come, play an MSR, right, okay, drummer number two, drummer number th- I'll tell you what, I think I think you start to find people looking for the exit. I think you would find that some of the drummers aren't really up to the strength oh. of what you think that chord is. If you that can makes see sense. It. it's impossible. You can to get see that, it when it? when the, when they play and you look along the line. You can actually see, yeah. it, you know that. But one of the, just a, a side story. One of the things we did in eighteen before we went to the world ourselves, and we were playing grade three, but I wanted to know where all the guys were at, so I recorded the the MSR and the medley, and then I made the each guy put on a set of headphones, but only one ear, yeah. one ear, one ear, so they could hear me in this ear, and they had to play all the chips and right through. And I recorded them, and then I used Audacity and laid the two over the top of each other. Yeah, yeah. So they could hear what they were doing. Uh huh. They could hear the yeah. lead bits. They could hear where they were sick. Nice. They could hear where their dynamics was different. Um, and it, it took a wee bit of time to do it. I did it with the tenor drummers as well. I made them play all the tenor parts. And, man, it made a big difference because nobody could hide after that, mm. which is which is what you're talking about. People, people get out there and mince around, and they don't do anything offensive, but they're not contributing to the music either. There's 100%. No- Hundred percent, and, and, and I've, I've actually heard somebody saying this, right? Mm. Wait, steady yourself for this statement, Mark. Right, steady for steady yourself. I've actually heard somebody say, "I've said, what about X guy?" Right? Uh-huh. They went, "Yeah, no, but he's got good band craft." Band that was craft. the phrase they used. Band craft. Let me tell you, what band craft is is another <laughs> word for dummying. That's what bandcraft is. Yeah. Dummying. It can it can go on, right? It can tinker about and nobody will notice that he's actually no really playing mm. the bits that he's meant to be playing. That's called, or this guy's called it bandcraft. That's was a like, participation award, eh? That's just like, delusional. What? <laughs> like, what? What do you mean bandcraft? Totally delusional. <laughs> like, what the, do you know what I mean? You're like, what? So I don't know, maybe I'm a purist. In, in the sense that maybe, maybe so it could be mind games like we're talking about, Mark, where you're like that. F- fire on 15 guys. 15 guys, and, and at least seven of them or five of them are playing band craft, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, so therefore, and so therefore we're maybe intimidating other cores. But then end of it's got like a, a, a modicum of, of knowledge would surely be going, yeah, but there's quite a few guys in there that are kind of, yeah. Like biscuit asked, as you would say. If anybody knows, if anybody knows what they're looking at, you can see it and you can hear it. But but the thing they don't seem to appreciate with their big numbers is all it's done is make everybody else back off. And it, it's great to learn this dynamics, and you know, it takes a lot of skill to play the small stuff and still play it in time and in phrasing and really clean. There's a lot of work goes into that. But if you don't match it with something at the other end, you don't get music. You just get pitter patter, and you need to be able to do both. And you need to be able to do it, you know, within mm. a couple of notes from nothing to everything, yeah. to to give the music that what you want, you know, the punch you want it to have. And I don't think they get that. There's sort of no top end at all. Well, listen, I mean, suppose technically, um, 
it's still going to reflect the like in a metronomic mark or the or the rhythmic mark of yep. strong weak weak strong weak medium weak. Yeah, so it's still yeah. it's still going to re- 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 that that rhythmic pulse. It's, go, it's still going to be the same. Mm. So you know. It's, yeah. Listen, hey, Mark. Mark, I, mean, I there's, think there's, there's politics in there too, and yes. and look, uh, people. I, I don't want to get into the politics, but um, please do, please do. <laughs> people, well, no, people you need another uh, hour for that. Take take a job on and say they endorse for a certain brand of drum, then they're going to go all out. It doesn't matter which brand it is. They're going to go all out to make sure that that drum's as good as it can possibly be and you know they're gonna go out uh even if they don't entirely believe it but they'll swear blind that it's the best thing since sliced bread because that's what they're doing that's their drum but whatever way you look at it there's still really only one pipe yeah. band drum that's right and you know e- even the new um the axial there's it's not quite there yet it's coming but they've already made some tweaks to it, and you know it's it's not quite there. But but the others, um, like we we had a comp just before Christmas, and two of the grade one cores came out and played. One core had ten drummers, and the other had five, and the guys with five playing the same type instrument blew the other core away simply because the drummers were committing to what they were playing and actually playing, not pattering. Whereas the, the guys, the 10, they were all just, the, the, the lead drummer was working her ass off and, and trying to encourage them to play, but they all mm. just, they're just like passengers, you know? Mm. And to me, um, that's one of the reasons I ever drummed is one of the beauties of being in the drum corps that the pipers don't get well, being the leading drummer in particular is that's how you get to express yourself. Yeah. You know, that's that's my yeah. interpretation of life through music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The scores that I write and the way I like to play them, it's it's like me saying that, uh, you know, that that's me. So um, it's all what it comes people, down to, eh? Yeah, yeah. And getting other people to play them with me and play mm. – as close as we can to the same style and feel and all that. Yeah. That's that's what the game really is about. So um I just don't understand why guys would go out and almost handicap themselves on a an inferior one, an inferior instrument, but two, um, ten guys, the chances of a disaster are much higher than seven. Yeah. Or More moving parts. Yeah. You gotta repair them. <laughs> yeah. So Anyway, look, uh, that's just my opinion. It's and and look, there's plenty of other people with other opinions. And um, I, I think coming back to what you're saying about what, what do I see the future look like, I think it's going to be good, but it's going to have to go through a bit of a transition here. Yeah, because there's so much. We're such a small country, but in everything, if you think about anything that New Zealanders do, we always punch above our weight. You know, we we don't we don't sort of step back from taking on the big guys, whatever whatever it is, whether it's rugby, whatever it is. You, uh, listen, how did I know he was going to mention the rugby? Well, how did I know he was going to mention the rugby? Listen, I've, listen, I don't know if you've noticed, Mark, but I've got a wallaby. Somebody had sent me a wallaby hat from a Christmas. I see tree. that. I see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I just said it, it, it got liberated from the you know the cargo container that they're sending it to the third world to get <laughs> people. You know, get like emergency. Emergency clothing because nobody in, nobody in Australia is buying it. So, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's got to keep somebody's head warm, but it, it's never going to get worn as a statement. You know, Australian rugby. It's actually cruel really? that you kept it as a memento. That was meant for someone else. That's I, something that is a, it's a mocking symbol. It's to mock you. It's your favorite tier two team. Hey, Mark, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, you said obviously you're a composer as well. Right, as well as an yeah. educator, I think your next tune's going to have to be called Bancraft. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love it. oh, it's a cracker! I like that. Well, and that's a great one I'll, tune, I'll, by I'll, the way. That's a great yeah, yeah. one. I'll go to Alex Stoffer and go, uh, "Here, Mark Weir's playing a tune called Bancraft. That's my name, Mark." <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Actually, I have to remember that for the next time I'm judging. I'll be able to put that on the sheet. Great bandcraft. Great bandcraft. Ten out of ten bandcraft. Exactly. I like it. Uh, we, and by the way, use that frequently. Use that oh, frequently, that phrase. I'll have to put like a wee brackets in AL, you know, the endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> you failed, but. 10 out of 10, Bancroft. 10 out of 10 for Bancroft. <laughs> yes, sir. You're not the worst, but you're the worst I've heard. <laughs> right. Um, what I was going to say is, is there's not really much more that we're going to, we're going to push for the day, Mark. Uh, all I'd like to say is thanks very much for coming on the show and gracing us with your presence. It's been a, a really good kind of, what's that, an hour? Um, yep. So hopefully we'll get this uploaded onto the show at the end of the month. Cool. And, um, I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I've enjoyed it. So, yeah. I mean, absolutely, Mark, you're I a treasure trove really of knowledge it. and experience. And uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, thanks for asking me, guys. I I appreciate the chance to chat. I mean, I love chatting to you guys anyway. But <laughs> um, if I can help, I love to do that too. So, I yeah. really appreciate it. I think the pipe band world needs to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I might even more than they need the to hear from us. <laughs> I might even put you up in the garage in here. All right, sir. I'm on. Just, oh, you're on. Fiji ch- chunks of meat through the window. Yeah. You know, Mark. You know. Yeah, that's be like mate. Prison, though, but I, I've not got a toilet in here, so it'll maybe like, can I just like a can or something like that? You could put it at like slot them out in the morning. Like, that's fine. Or rattle your cage. Is he in there? Is he Sounds in there? Good. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All we need to do is get Mark on. That's it. Do you think he's the thing we've got there is lovely oh, Disney? Come on, right? Fuck it. Interviews done. That's it. Are what we? About, we're nearly done. Yeah. Winter storm. We can't really talk about that because it's not happened yet. Mm-hmm. Next we're, show. We're doing the what's next now, aren't we? We're doing what's next. Yeah. Right. Okay. And he. Right, okay, so let's just kind of finish up. So that's kind of pretty much wraps it for the show. Yeah. All we've got to do is to look forward to. So what have we got to look forward to? Chase, what have, what have we got coming up? Tell me. Um. Oh, well, I actually heard that you have a bit of an interest in the Balrone. Do you not? And we were going to put you put you in a situation there that you might be Listen, a little bit unfamiliar with. Do you know what? We've mentioned that a few times in the show, right? Here, here it comes. Right, so... We went and done the lamb bag, yeah. right? I done the lamb bag in Belfast. Ha- mm-hmm. Happy days, right? Done. And I said, what we need to do is we need to do the bowling, right? Mm. Which is uh, an ancient drum. And I've it's got one at home. Yep. And many, many people think they can play it, right? So it's like one of the instruments that everybody goes, oh, I'm, I'm a half a go hero. Oh, I can't play anything. What can you play? I'll play the, I'll play the bowling. Look. Right, so there's a lot right. of people do that, right? And then that when you actually see, so, yeah, and when you actually see a guy play it, yeah, properly, you're like that, Jesus. And that's what I've done with mines. Mines are a wee travel bag now, right? And I'm like, I, I can't play that. That's, Looking at mine I've over there trying, right now. Yeah, I've been trying <laughs> people on for years about it. So long story cut short, I got in touch with a guy called Craig Baxter, and uh, I explained to him that I couldn't go to his his practices on the, the Monday night because obviously I've got pipe banned Monday night. Right, right. I give him a text. Anyway, long story cut short. He would appreciate good that. Good news. Me. Well, well, listen, good news. He's like, I find out he's an ex-pipe band drummer. You're right? kidding. Like, I no, no, listen. So this is the good news, right? This is how I described my bow run proficiency. <laughs> I turn around and say to the guy, I says, look, I says, I play the bow run like a gala day drunken side drummer plays Scotland the Brave. I think that kind of sums up. We my, all know my level. how that goes. Yeah, uh, I mean, right away you're like that. <laughs> you start off there and he, he, he just, he read that text, he's like, right, he's, he's down there. He's down that. <laughs> That's actually below the quality line of, of being a, a, a named drummer. So, long story cut short, I'm going to get a couple of lessons with this guy. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Uh, he's a he's a drummer, a, a, a really good pipe band drummer. So I'm hoping that we can he can ed- educate me, and he, he can kind of transfer the information 
that makes I'm hoping it easier you're for me able understand. to grasp how to do like a bloody triplet on a baron because that shit is hard. Listen, <laughs> it's hard full stop, right? I mean, that's that's what it is. <laughs> well, what I'm hoping to do is get a couple of lessons off him and then maybe get something that we can see or hear and, and, yeah. and hear about the kind of discussion about it. Also, also, I'm going to talk about Winter Storm, which is on this month, and it's Andy, one of the big... Fa- what is uh, it? What is Winter Storm? Listen, what Winter Storm about? is... Winter Storm is a kind of three days in Kansas City in America where they have solo drumming, painting concerts, a whole shabag. I've just made that word up. Shabag of of paint bandery, right? Paint bandery for three days in Kansas City. I've never been here. Andy, Andy, is this a is this like a Benny event or what? No, no. Hey, what's far from Benny event? We're talking big people go to this this event. Huh. Big players go get a good like get graded, get get playing, get solo drumming. And it's 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 not to be mocked. It started years and years ago, but it's like kind of morphed into this really big thing. Now here's the deal: you and I, I suggest, are going to the one next year, right? Because that ship sailed. We missed it. But but I guarantee you, it's something that we'd love to see. You can see it virtually online, right? Yeah, Which we yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we're not going to get the same sort of atmosphere. So I guarantee you, well, I'm not guaranteed, but Mrs. Little probably saying, no, you're not going. But I'm actually <laughs> thinking we should do that next year, 2025, Kansas City. Wow. However, what we spoke about in the last episode about yeah. the dear, dear Santa can I have five major championships? Yes. Remember when we were talking about the RSPBA and this, the that, and band association? Here's another thing that was interesting, right? Okay. So I I, I get this uh, story, right? That actually what the Northern Irish community wanted to do was have an equivalency of winter storm, but have it in the spring. Right, so love us spring, spring storm type thing. <laughs> yeah. Springsteen? I don't know. That it sounds quite, too much like it doesn't that quite, sounds yeah. too much like Springsteen. It's oh. Like maybe Bruce Springsteen. Maybe maybe folks start to look with bandanas, right? <laughs> we we like what, a, a red hanky hanging out their jeans. You know what I mean? Like all oh, these Bruce Springsteen. Start hanky. Start hanky. You know, like, <laughs> all these Bruce Springsteen kind of uh, copycat lookalikes turn up <laughs> mid Ulster. <laughs> Uh, hi man, where's the, where's the Bruce Springsteen <laughs> answer? No, it's Springsteen. Spring Storm. Spring Storm. <laughs> no, no, it's Springsteen. Anyway, so basically, they get told from the RSPBA that if they had that event, right, and pipe bands turned up at it, they would be struck off, sin died. So they kind of doused water on it, Whoa. allegedly. Yeah, they, they, they kind of say, no, we're not happy the body. with that idea. They pooped the party. Yeah, they kind of say, no, that's not a good idea. But I think they're wrong. I think that would have been a great idea because I can't really afford to go over to Kansas City for like five days, right? Yeah. It's a wee bit, it's a wee bit costly that's, for me. That's what I'm I thinking can't when you say say it. It. <laughs> but like, so this is what I'm saying. So I could, kind, I could kind of afford to get a boat across the water or I could kind of afford to get a cheap flight to like Northern Ireland mm. and I could do something like that. So my point is, is that Where's, where's the value in that? Where's the value in kind of sub, sub And this pressing? is where the, the Pipe Band Association over there is getting their, in, into some hot water, aren't they? Because they're not doing enough. And if you did do one more thing, well, hey, it wouldn't thing, hurt right? you, so would it? These are, the, these are the same guys that can't deliver, right? The basics. The basics is five majors for the Pipe Bands, right? But they're more concentrated, it, it appears. It appears to the the un you know the un, un unaware. It appears that it seems that it's more important about what the 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 the, the actual organisation controls and can stop in a, and and accept or you know green light red light. It seems more important what they can do than rather what they can actually what they you know like, be doing. say Rob, listen, we, we should be doing this. We should be doing many of that. I don't know. I, listen, I'm just a guy spitballing these ideas. Looking but, from the outside. It's just, 
It's like, so when I read that, I thought, is this thing's in fire this winter storm? Yeah. Yeah. The first time, actually, the first time I heard about it, honestly, genuinely, was like ages ago, right? And the guy that I heard about going to it uh, was a young drummer at the time. Mm. Uh, his name was Grant Cassidy. He's now the lead tip of shorts, right? Okay. And I was talking to his old man, and he's like, oh, we're just back from Kansas City, and we've done the Winter Storm thing. And that was that was kind of genuine. Fuck a gen. The first time I'd heard it, that's, I'm, talking, I'm talking maybe about 10 years ago or something like that. So that was the first time I'd heard it. Uh, but obviously, it's, it's I suppose it's the, the punishment, and it's a punishment party. American bands and Canadian bands have a difficulty coming to Scotland. Yeah. Right? So guess yeah. what? Thanks we have a party. Yeah. We're having a party and you just can't help me because it's too what? right. So I, I, I kind of <laughs> get that. I kind of I kind of yeah. get the thing that they, they need to do things to generate their, their side of the water. But uh, this is but, great, yeah. right? We're talking about it here, right? So 2024, let's say that ship has sailed. We missed the old uh, storm. What is it? Storm. Winter storm. <laughs> Winter storm. It's not hard. It's not even in German or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like winter storm. <laughs> hey, go up. So, hey, go, go. so winter storms happened, but uh, 2024, but I think 2025 winter storm. That's, what, that's what I said. That's the we're big one. This. That's the big one. We've got it in us. Everyone I knows about it now. Got, well, <laughs> listen, you're going to put, right, listen, we'll get things going on this year, right? Um, We'll get things happening this year. But I'm actually thinking, right, you know what I think about Christmas. I'm not thinking about, I'm, we're not going down that road, right? <laughs> you know what I think about it, right? So why don't I just kind of convince people in my household that I'm like, listen. We're going to Kansas, baby. Listen, don't <laughs> buy me anything. <laughs> exactly. Don't buy me anything. And I'll not buy you anything. It's like Christmas with the cranks in it. I'll be like, yeah. don't you buy me anything. I'll not buy you anything. Like what we'll, do is, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to Kansas City. What? We'll go to Kansas City. Why are we going to Kansas? It's meant to be beautiful. It's meant to be one of the best. <laughs> it's meant to be a, it's a romantic city. They call it. Yeah. Actually, Kansas, Kansas City is known as Paris of the of Americas. Americas. Triple R, really? What? Yeah. Yeah. Don't Google it. You now. don't even have to Google that's it. That's how much I love you. I'm doing that for you. <laughs> so that, that's, I can see that actually happening, obviously. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll have a knife in the back of my head. It'll just wedge the back of my head after that. It'll be the last show we ever do, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be blood down your screen. Ah. <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's something we've got to that's a big look Look forward to. Look forward to that. We've got to try. We've got to try. we got to try. And, uh, and listen, you know what? What about this? If we go, if we aim for that, right, we've got, so let, let me just recap here. Listen, listen, listen to this recap of this easy list. If they build a <laughs> statue for Alex Dothar <laughs> and Canvas Nathan, we'll be flying. We'll be flying to Kansas City right, to watch Winter Storm. Yeah. This is all going to happen. This is, like, e- this is, this is easy is quite, stuff, guys. This is easy stuff. <laughs> it's not. It's not held, holding five majors a year. Like, this is nah. just a statue listen, and listen, getting to Kansas. Listen, people talk about winning the World Peak Band Championships. Listen, see if I can do this. Get a statue and go to Kansas City. This is the real stuff that's happening in the pipe band <laughs> world, people. All right, so my heads, that's us out of time. However, um, look forward to our next show where I'll be learning all things Bowran. Um, which I'm looking forward to and I'm even more looking forward to the fact that we're going to see Jason get out and about this time he's going to be doing some crazy dragon boat race and we'll find out all about that however if you want to keep in touch with us and you want to post some sort of information or things that we should know about please Jace let them know you can get to us on uh, two ways you can get to us on Instagram which is rude and mental underscore drumcast and if you'd like to email in any of your questions or concerns uh, you can get us on rudeandmental.drumcast at gmail.com. Hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. Thanks right, for Right, remember, like and subscribe. Ciao. <laughs>